Hey everybody! So today we're going to talk some more about the Galactic Center research, um, specifically the research not of, of famous or well-known people, but um, of people that have been a part of our questionnaire, um, taken part in the survey. There is a lot, I'll tell you this, there's a lot to pick apart and there are a lot of different ways that this can be looked at. And it's kind of <laughs> breaking everything down <laughs> in the different camps. I'm That's kind of how I'm thinking about it in my mind. Um, so first I wanna start out with my disclaimer that I am not a galactic center expert. I am not claiming to be. <laughs> I have a lot of astrological knowledge, but this is one area where I am um, just legitimately fucking with astrology. I, this is just fucking with astrology. So nobody hold me to any of this or, <laughs> or, or take this and run with it and think it's absolute truth. I am not saying that. Um, but I do think some of these are, I do think some of the research is in, some of it is interesting because it does in a way, some of it anyway, looking at it from a certain, certain lens, <laughs> Um, some of it does kind of go along with what I've already been looking at with the charts of like whistleblowers and truth tellers, truth seekers, um, conspiracy theorists, all these, all these kinds of people. There are some, some correlations, but I, I do think that there are, okay, first let me say, I think that the galactic center can be a lot of things. I think it can manifest a lot of ways in people's charts. Um, I do not think, well, I think it's a very cool thing. Okay. I do think it's a really cool thing and it's massively fascinating to me. Um, I do not necessarily think it is a good thing or an easy thing. I think it certainly can be utilized in a good or easy way. Maybe, maybe I don't even know if easy is the right word to use because really it doesn't feel easy regardless, but <laughs> I think it's one of those things that, one of those places, well, and a lot of the chart can be this way, right? You can, you can manifest it for the good or the bad, good or bad. But I do think with all the energy in the GC, there is a, uh, these people that have, um, that seem to be more galactic century inclined um, or have an affinity for it in some way, um, through their chart, they probably have an easier time utilizing the energy and either doing something good or bad with it. Um, now, just to be clear, with this research, we put out a call. Oh my God, that is so loud. We don't even live near an airport. I don't know why the fuck this is so loud. <laughs> I don't know why it's a lot. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so in this in this research that we started in in January, the original questionnaire dealt primarily with the conjunctions to the GC, and then there was a separate section for people that had the oppositions or conjunctions to the Galactic Anti Center. This was the primary focus <clears throat> of the research at that point in time. It wasn't until later that um, we started noticing that the Jupiter RX um, trend, <laughs> if you will, through um, through the charts of like well-known people, and um, also the trine. I noticed the trine. The trine seemed to be very important in these people's charts as well. So, looking at these people. And thank you again so much for, for everybody who has wanted to be part of this research. I so appreciate it. Um, if anybody else wants to join in, it's not too late. It's never too late. Um, send me a message and let me know or, an e or email us and let us know and we'll, uh, I'll get you the survey um, so you can join in. But um, I've started looking at these people in a different way you know, also taking into account the trines, also taking into account, you know, Jupiter retrograde or not. Um, all of these kinds of things are now, are now being taken into consideration. 
So, <clears throat> in saying that, I've got my, I've got my little, I've got multiple things of this <laughs> in my, in my book. Um, okay, <clears throat> so we'll start with, um, this one will primarily, this video will primarily talk about Jupiter. Um, I'll do another one about the out of bounds planets. <clears throat> But, um, okay, so going through all of these, and I couldn't use everybody that did the questionnaire. So there are some people that I, I couldn't do, and I couldn't do them because they either didn't leave a name, <laughs> so I have no idea who it belongs to. They didn't leave their date of birth. <laughs> um, I've gotten some charts emailed, but those have been accounted for those people have been accounted for. So I'm not totally sure if you've done the questionnaire, done the survey, um, and you think you may not have left your name and your date of birth or your Reddit username and your date of birth or however you wanna be identified for this purpose. If this ever, anything ever gets published, you will not be identified by name if you don't want to be. <laughs> but for this purpose, it's nice to have a name or something to, to put with it. But there are people that left that out, left out, their date of birth and their time of birth, place of birth, all of, so some of these people I was not able to use in doing this. Um, and on the flip side of that, I had some clients um, reach out that saw that I was doing this <laughs> and wanted to be part of it and they haven't actually done the questionnaire, they just said it was fine if I, you know, use the information. Um, so um, anyway, I'm looking at, to start off, I'm, I started looking at Jupiter retrograde because I do think that Jupiter retrograde plays a massive role in, in being able to harness the GC energy. I do, I think it does. Um, Cause it just feels very, Jupiter RX feels very galactic century as it is. <laughs> and I mentioned in other videos why that is and in, in a blog post why that is. But um, there does seem to be a similar energy involved with with the two. Now, when I look at all of these, I came up with, I came up with 43% of the people that have done the questionnaire, 43% um, have Jupiter retrograde. Now, that doesn't seem like a very high number, but, and while Jupiter retrograde, it'll, it'll stay retrograde for about four months on average. Um, since it's not, it's not the most common thing to have retrograde, but it's not the least common thing to have retrograde either. Um, I do think, while it's not half, I do think that it is inter I wasn't actually expecting it to be as high as it is. I really wasn't. Um, I actually figured it would come back lower. Um, <laughs> but it, it ended up coming, coming back at 43%. So I, I do think that that is interesting. Now, if you, okay, now I also took a look at each of these people to see if they happened to be born during a shadow period during the Jupiter retrograde shadow period, which is, you know, two weeks before, two weeks after Jupiter turns retrograde and direct. When you take that into account, and when you look at which people had Jupiter out of bounds, and Jupiter out of bounds, I also think, well, I think out of bounds planets matters here. I'll get into that in another video, the percentage of all of that. But um, just specifically Jupiter out of bounds, just this out of bounds planet. This one goes out of bounds the least. So it seems important. There were a few people that actually had this. I was kind of shocked to see this because in all the time I've been practicing, I don't see Jupiter out of bounds very often. I, I don't, I've seen it a couple times, but not very often. So to see, you know, in this, in the smaller sample, because it is overall, it's a small, it's over, it's over 50 people, but it's a small, you know, in the big scheme of things, it's a smaller sample to see like four or five people with, uh, with Jupiter out of bounds is interesting because it doesn't go out of bounds very often. Um, so when you take that one into account, P 
people that have Jupiter retrograde and people that are born during the shadow period of Jupiter retrograde, you come up with 58%. Um, that again is higher than what I was kind of expecting. Um, when I was before actually doing the math and doing this all in my mind. Um, now, I've also mentioned in other videos that I feel like um, Mercury retrograde probably plays a role into this too. It feels like a more difficult role. Um, just because of the way that Mercury retrograde kind of functions, it's it has a hard time seeing the big picture. It gets thrown so much noise that it can have a hard time being able to decipher what what's actually noise and what isn't. Which can, you know, if, if that's not being done, that can be very difficult to, with seeing the big picture. You can feel real scattered. It can feel real um, disorganized. You might not know where to start, <laughs> how to put things together to see the big picture. So, but because it's part of the communication access, 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 and because, you know, with Jupiter, and um, because there is something to me anyway that about the galactic anti-center that does feel kind of um, Mercury retrograde-ish. And I say that there's also something that feels, you know, Uranian about it too. But with how um, there are, there's blinding, right? And there's space dust and it, essentially space noise, <laughs> if you want to think about it like that, that might make it hard to see the big picture. Um, so I, I do make this connection in my mind with, with Mercury retrograde and the galactic anti-center. So I do think it's an important one to put in, put in here. And when you look at, when I, when I started including those people that have um, Mercury retrograde in their chart too, so we're talking about people that have Jupiter stuff and Mercury stuff. Um, Mercury retrograde stuff. <clears throat> that comes back at 71%. That's pretty high. I think that's pretty high for something like this. Um, <clears throat> so I do feel like I am on onto something with this. <laughs> I do. Um, I really, like I, like I mentioned, I really didn't think any of this would come back quite as high as it did. Um, I was kind of, I mean, it's not like, not like it's like phenomenally high, but it, overall it is high, which does lead me to think that I am on, I am on a track. <laughs> is it the right one? I don't know, but I feel like I am on a track. Um, so yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's a lot of other things that I noticed too. In the next video, I'll talk about um, a little bit about the out of bounds planets that I found. Um, I also noticed, and I need to go back through everything because there's so much information to take in, right? <laughs> there is. Um, all these different things that I've been writing down, things that I've noticed. Um, it does seem like, I know I did a blog post and did a video about Chiron and possibly having an involvement with the GC2, I have noticed that there are a lot of people, what the percentage is, I don't know, I need to work that out. But it does seem like there are a lot of people that have, um, that have Chiron involved somewhere in, in the GC, uh, either conjuncted, opposite, uh, trine. Uh, I have noticed that. Uh, Chiron retrograde is another one that I've noticed a lot. A lot of people seem to have that retrograde. I know that that's not totally uncommon, but it did appear to me like there were a decent amount of people that had this retrograde for this particular study. So that's another connection that I need to look more into. But, um, but yeah, and you know, I also think I also need to look into just retrograde planets in general. I, I have them all written down. I also noticed this, but I need to go back through and work the do the actual uh, percentages. Uh, it seemed like a lot of people had not. I need to go back through and work the actual math, but I did. It did. It did appear to me like there were quite a few people that had the planet conjunct the GC. It was retrograde. 
Um, Neptune retrograde was one I remember seeing a lot. Uh, Uranus retrograde is one I remember seeing a lot. Um, so I think there's probably something there too. And I know I've mentioned that the GC is kind of, it's very Jupiter retrograde. Oops. It's very Jupiter retrograde in general, <clears throat> but there's definitely um, something that's just, there is a retrograde flavor to the GC. Jupiter retrograde most of all, but there is kind of a retrograde flavor to it. Overall, I've mentioned that before. So I'll need to go back and look at that some more. Anyway, I'm gonna get going because this one got kind of long, um, or long-ish. long, long -ish. Um, If you want to follow us on Instagram, find us at Let's Fuck With Astrology. I'm at Saturn Season Astrology on Instagram. Natalie is about Paternal Astrology on Instagram. If you want to subscribe to us on YouTube and um, like our shit, <laughs> you can search for us by searching for Let's Fuck With Astrology. Um, if you do the Reddit thing, you want to come join us on the subreddit, Let's Fuck With Astrology, we'd love to have you. And if you're interested in the star cards, go to letsfuckwithastrology.com slash star dash cards. Okay, y'all. I'll see y'all later.